Hello, my name is Lo and I am currently in Cincinnati. So my mom and I came to Cincinnati as the first stop on a multi-month, multi-continent trip. We came here to visit her father and her side of the family for Thanksgiving. Now, the thing about Cincinnati is that it's not necessarily known as a big touristy place, but in between time spent with family, I've actually had the chance to go around downtown Cincinnati a little bit and I've had a really good time. So I wanted to kind of share some of the strategies that I've used to enjoy myself in a city that's not necessarily known for tourism and attractions. So if you know me even slightly, you know that I love coffee. I love working at coffee shops. I love being at coffee shops. I love spending all of my money at coffee shops. So it's probably not that surprising that my main strategy for when I'm in a new city is to go to a bunch of different coffee shops. And I don't drive normally for a bunch of different reasons, but especially when I'm traveling, my main mode of transportation is walking. So typically what I do is just go on Google Maps, find a coffee shop nearby, go to that one, spend a little bit of time there, and then find the next coffee shop and walk there. And a lot of the time during that walk from one coffee shop to the next, I end up walking through really cool areas that I wouldn't otherwise have known to go to. For example, yesterday while I was walking, I stumbled upon a couple really cute local bookstores, a record store, a really cool public park, and I took the little pit stops in each of those because they caught my eye, and I ended up having a really great time just wandering around kind of aimlessly. Another reason why this is a great strategy is that most coffee shops have free Wi-Fi, so once you get to your destination, you can take a second, kind of drink your coffee, chill out, enjoy the good vibes, and check Google Maps and see what's nearby. See what this neighborhood has to offer. See what the neighboring neighborhood has to offer. And baristas can be a great source of local knowledge. I've definitely on multiple occasions went in a different city, wandered into a local coffee shop, spent a little bit of time there, started chatting with the baristas, and asked them, hey, you know what, what do you do for fun around here? And I usually end up getting some really cool suggestions that there's absolutely no way I would have ever found out about otherwise. Now, I am a little hesitant to say that though, because as a barista, sometimes people will come into my shop and ask me, uh, what are some things that I like to do in Nashville? And my mind just goes blank. And I'm just like, what are things? I don't know. I mean, feel it out. If your barista doesn't seem very comfortable chatting or doesn't seem to be having a great day, like maybe don't bug them because they are service workers and the service that they're getting paid for is to make you a coffee, not to be your personal tour guide. So definitely be aware of that and be understanding if they're not the friendliest or if they're not giving you all of these great suggestions like you were hoping for. I do want to mention though that there are several times when this strategy might not be the best. Um, obviously number one, if you're not in a walkable city, if you're in a suburb or a rural area and that you can't just walk around from coffee shop to coffee shop like you could in a dense urban area. Number two is a safety concern. So obviously this strategy requires some degree of flexibility, you know, you don't necessarily know where you're going to end up going, you don't necessarily know the area, so you don't know where you're walking to and from and what areas you're passing through, and there is always the possibility that you might end up in a less than ideal area. Now I do want to give the disclaimer to a disclaimer on this. Um, and say that a lot of the time when people talk about bad areas, what they really mean is I saw a black person and got nervous. So definitely do try to be aware of those internalized prejudices when you're traveling because you know the point of traveling is to get a little bit out of your comfort zone to, you know, just expand your horizons. So don't be afraid just because you might end up in an area that has a population that you're not used to being around, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, do be aware 
obviously whenever you're traveling anywhere whether it's a good area or a bad area you don't want to be looking at your phone all of the time you you want to have your eyes out you want to be watching the road you want to be watching cars make sure that you're looking at all of the street signs so that if your phone happens to die you know how to get back home all of this kind of stuff you know just be prepared be cognizant be aware and make sure that you're putting your own safety first pay attention to your surroundings I also wanted to add, because I forgot to mention this the first time, but there's also the consideration of cost. So obviously if you're going from coffee shop to coffee shop to coffee shop throughout an entire day and getting five, six dollar lattes, that can add up really quickly. So number one, I would suggest um, varying what you buy, you know, maybe get a tea instead of a coffee, which would be a little bit cheaper. And number two is that this strategy isn't an everyday thing. I suggest doing it maybe the second or third day that you are in a city so the coffee shop tour can help you get to know the city and figure out which places you want to spend more time in in the future but i definitely don't suggest doing this every day because that would get really expensive really quickly the last thing i want to say is that really what's going to make or break this strategy is your attitude. If you're going from place to place like, oh, I hate walking, I hate the weather, I hate passing by people on the sidewalk, I just wanna look at my phone, obviously this isn't gonna work because you're gonna be upset, you're not gonna see what the city has to offer. But if you view it as an adventure, if you view it as an opportunity to uncover a different side of the city than what you would typically find in a tourist attractions list, you're probably gonna have a really great time. So that's all that I have. That's one of my biggest tips that I've been using while traveling in Cincinnati, especially if it's not a super touristy city. I think the best way to really build a connection with the city is to just go from coffee shop to coffee shop and see what you can find and really just look at every day like an opportunity for adventure because that's what traveling is about. I hope that this helps. I hope that you have a great trip wherever you're going and thank you for watching.